Hello, magical people. My name is Lou, and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today, I was going to do a brief reading for the collective about the energy that's going to be coming at you in the next few days. And it is the intention that this video is timeless, so there is no specific next few days. Um, any days following the few days after which you view this are the energies that I am tapping into. So like I said, it's going to be just a brief reading. We're going to look at the uh, overall energy, the undercurrents, um, things to be aware of or keep in mind, and then three different advice cards. And we'll also pull a couple of oracle cards and we will get clarification on all of those as well. Um, also I'll, at the end I'll be pulling a uh, stone from my chakra stones collection. So there's only seven stones in this pouch and I'll be pulling one of those out just to uh, confirm for us what chakra would be most beneficial for us to be aware of over this next few days. So I've already pre-shuffled all of my decks and let's go ahead and get started here. So again, we're going to be looking at the energy coming at us in the next few days. And the first card that we're going to be looking at here will be the uh, overall energy. And so for overall energy, we have the nine of arrows, uh, which is also the nine of swords. And for undercurrents, we have the uh, Ace of Arrows. And then for things to keep in mind, we have, or to be aware of, we have the Sun card. So coming out of the gate, hitting things pretty hard. Now the Nine of Arrows card or the Nine of Swords card is sometimes known as the a sleepless nice cards or the nightmare card this is often it's 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 a difficult energy to move through I'm not gonna lie and with the that being the overall energy and then the undercurrent energy being the ace of swords um i'm sorry the well in this it's the ace of arrows but it is the ace of swords in other decks so that's all about a new truth um, a gift from the universe that's in the archetype of the, or in the element of air, which is about our thoughts and our, um, the ways in which we view things. So this is, this is, <laughs> I thought this was going to be a super light reading, um, but it sounds as though maybe something may be coming at you that is going to cause you some distress or or is going to cause you some discomfort, but the underlying energy or the undercurrent of the energy is truth. So this is information that needs to come to you. And again, with the nine of arrows, again, being in this, in the suit of arrows, which is also the suit of swords, um, this can be very much um, anguish in the way that we think about things. So this doesn't necessarily mean that something bad is going to come into your life or happen in any way, but there might be, yeah, like I said, information that's coming at you that might be disruptive to your status quo. Um, however, with the undercurrent being the truth here, this is information that you do need. Um, and with the uh, to be aware of or to keep in mind coming up as the sun, well, that is a pretty beautiful energy. The sun is all about having lightness, bringing lightness to situations, um, having wish fulfillment, having a joyful way of looking at things. So if there is something that you're coming across this weekend that it does feel uncomfortable, that it is bringing up discomfort, then, um, you know, there's, there's, there's going to be good that comes from it in the long run. There will be truth that comes from it, a new way of thinking about things, um, and the possibility for real wish fulfillment. And, and it's not even just wish fulfillment. That's more the star. This is more embodying the energy of childlike joy. Um, it really is that feeling of the sun shining on a beautiful day. It's a very 
unburdened feeling. So, you know, maybe you're going into this next few days and, and there is something that feels very unpleasant. Uh, this could be something like, um, you know, maybe somebody says something to you uh, that just really causes you to get into your head, really hurts your feelings, but it's also an opportunity to look at what the underlying truth is there and to take growth from it and moving out of that place of anguish and into a place of um, acceptance and joy and, and being unburdened. So let's take a look at three advice cards that come out. So we have Justice, The Fool, and Optimism, which, and, um, so Justice and The Fool are both major arcana cards. And then in this deck, the Optimism card is the Four of Feathers, which is also known as the Four of Wands or the Four of Fire. This is one of my more favorite cards in the deck. Um, I'm not gonna lie, this rendition of it also is just so dang cute. Um, you know, really is about being in a place of equanimity, um, having this, letting this move you into a place of trying to find justice, trying to find balance, trying to find um, that new sense of being unburdened to the point where you're able to step into new things and doing so with a sense of optimism. So it started off a little bit rough here with that anguish card, um, but it's looking pretty good. So let's pull clarifiers on all of these and then we'll pull some oracle cards too and see if we can flesh it out a little bit. Uh, all right, so for the nine of swords, we have the nine of cups. Okay, interesting. So, and for the Ace of Pentacles, oh, fascinating. We have the Ace of Wands. And then for the Sun card, we have the Fool. Oh, this is really, really neat. There's so much repetition happening here. Um, wow. So with this new truth, uh, okay, back up. Let me, let me finish pulling these. So. For the Justice card, we have the Emperor. For the Fool card, we have the Two of Pentacles. And for the Optimism card, the Four of Wands, we have the Four of Pentacles. Um, so, wow. You know, I almost get the feeling with these, with these two cards here, uh, with the Nine of Swords, uh, or Nine of Arrows, and the Nine of Cups, it's interesting that they're both nines and you know nines are very close to ten so this is talking about a cycle getting moving towards an ending and I think it's interesting you know so like with this guy here um, certainly no nobody would be able to look at this guy and think that he's sitting in a place of anguish like there's so much bounty and so much abundance um, available to this guy here even though he's not he's got his back turned to it and I'm wondering if there's something that you know is is there's an abundance of emotions there's an abundance of feelings and yet your thinking around it is feeling very anguished so this can sometimes show up and you know again the situation where somebody hurts your feelings maybe this is somebody that you weren't expecting this hurtful feeling to come from or this hurtful phrase to come from this could be um, maybe you were up for a promotion at work and you really have all of the skills you've just you've got so much experience you've got so many skills um, and you really kind of thought you had it in the bag and then come to find out they went to pick they went and they they chose somebody else um, their logic process was different than your logic process and that also brought you to a point of major disappointment so you know this can these energies can show up in an infinite number of ways um, those are just kind of a couple examples that I'm thinking of but again with the mirroring between the um, clarifying card and the original card we've got the um, ace of arrows the uh, which is swords and then we also have the ace of wands uh, which you know again it's just interesting that they're mirroring it so both of these are very much the beginning of a cycle so this one is new truth new thinking um, a new understanding of things 
maybe even perhaps about yourself and wands being all about inspiration and intuition and passion and creativity um you know this maybe this difficult time maybe this setback this disappointment this thing that didn't quite really pan out the way you were thinking it was going to instead is going to lead to something that is brand new a brand new way of thinking about things a brand new truth a brand new project or passion or creative endeavor and with both the sun and the fool here coming up so the sun it's kind of interesting even how the colors are sort of matched here you know like a, a lot of the sun is just like the, the fool is practically sitting in it like there's this energy of stepping into the unknown which again is very much um like new and courageous and um Mm, that's what I'm looking for like that joyful sort of energy that comes out in the sun is also you know showing up in terms of the fool so this is really it's interesting sometimes when clarifiers just instead of clarifying through offering wholly different messages will instead clarify through um, offering validation for the messages that have already come through so that's pretty interesting here and again with the full coming in here twice and with two aces of pentacles or two aces you know I think that there's definitely going to be some some good nuggets that are going to come out of this disappointment and this feeling of um, things not being what you want them to be not being your most ideal um, so again we started off with justice the fool and optimism the four of wands um, and the cards that we pulled as clarifiers for that were the Emperor um, for justice so let's just put these two for together for a moment here like in a lot of ways um, you know the justice card the way that he the em I'm sorry the Emperor card the way that the Emperor is sitting on that throne he is in a state of equanimity he is in a state of trying to be balanced with all of the material facts and trying to make good choices and use his experience and his wisdom to lead uh, to lead himself and others forward. So, you know, again, I feel like this is really just kind of reiter reiterating this as advice because don't forget these three cards showed up in the advice. So with this feeling of disruption, feeling of discomfort, things not turning out the way you want, but then possibilities, maybe newbie, newly coming in on the horizon, new ways of thinking, new things to be curious and passionate about, um, and then taking this hurt to bring yourself into a new step of life. You know, that's that's kind of like the reading, and then your, your spirit team is these last three cards, um, times two, so I guess six cards, um, are really their advice. So their advice is to try and not be so far in it that you can't have a sense of balance and objectivity and equanimity about it. You know, it's about trying to have a mindful distance from all of the disruption that's going on. And, you know, here, yeah, I mean, obviously, the fool is, again, that that very much that energy of stepping into the unknown, um, taking a leap of faith, but also, you know, that, that can very much bring feelings of, um, you know, there's a lot of chaos. The Two of Pentacles is, is really kind of all about being able to juggle the material aspects of life, even, it's, even amidst a time of chaos. So I really get the feeling here that your spirit team is, um, again, just kind of showing up and say, remain calm. <laughs> you got this. This is going to open up something new and interesting for you. Um, and it will, again, bring a little bit of chaos, but you have all of the skills here. Just remember that even when there's chaos happening around you, you can absolutely show up to be the juggler. Uh, and look at this guy. He's even doing it on one foot there. So, you know, that's pretty impressive skill. And your spirit team wants to remind you that you have those skills available to you. And then with the four of wands, and the or in this deck the four of feathers um and then with the four of pentacles you know this can also it's interesting that both of them are four is the, the repetition here is just really kind of fascinating um but with the two fours fours are often a lot about stability and building towards things and with the fire that can be you know that can absolutely show up as optimism and being in a place of not only just balance but balance and celebration and then with the four of pentacles you know this guy 
you know, there's, there's depending on the context of the reading I'm doing, I, I feel like this card often has different feelings um, associated with it. And today the message that's coming through is that um, it's really okay for you to hold on to what is yours. And let me, let me reiterate that a, a little bit in, a, in using slightly different words because I don't mean in the sense of hoarding, uh, which is kind of what it looks like this guy's doing here. And that's not really, nobody wants to promote hoarding, probably. I mean, I don't want to promote hoarding. Maybe somebody does, but I don't know who that would be. Um, but anyways, the, um, but it's not so much about that kind of um, being aware of what's yours and taking care of it. It's more that as you move through this time of things maybe getting a little jangled and um, you know things being really just messed up in your energy system, information coming in that you're not quite sure what to do with, that maybe you feel a little bit blindsided by, um, trying to have the mindfulness to allow those gifts from the universe, those two aces, the ace of pentacles, or I'm sorry, the ace of wands and the ace of swords, allowing those gifts from the universe to just sort of gently show up as an undercurrent and to know that as you're taking these steps forwards, as you're trying to find your own inner sun um, and move out of a painful or uncomfortable or disappointing situation and moving into something that is meant for you, because again, these are both nines, these are both cycles, that are ending and then we have not only two ones which are about new cycles beginning but then we also have the full card showing up from two different decks and you know I think that really speaks a lot to being mindful of and being aware of what is yours and the other flip side of that is also being aware of what's not yours and even though this is showing up in pentacles I feel like this isn't so much about stuff but this is about actually you on a on a body level and it's interesting because one of the other videos that I'm going to be shooting soon here is about energetic hygiene um, and I feel like maybe that would be a good video for you to go watch um, because it's really talking about that principle of you know what we hold on to on an energetic and on a body level um, that we don't have to and what we sometimes give up on an energetic or bodily level um, uh, that we don't really have to. So <clears throat> that's all very abstract language. Not sure if anybody's even understanding what I'm talking about. So I'm going to try and give a couple of examples of how this might show up in the greater context of this. Um, so sometimes, like for example, um, us taking on or not being aware of what is ours can show up in terms of uh, we get so busy with all of the things that we need to do that we forget to feed ourselves. We get so busy with, busy with all of the tasks that we need to complete that we forget to have good um, sleep hygiene and allow ourselves enough time to rest. And you know, so this is this can be about a hoarding. And again, I'm using that word not in the typical sense, but being aware of your physical resources and managing them appropriately. Because, you know, another thing that kind of comes to mind with all of this, again, reiterating that just new cycles ending and new cycles moving in, is that that can be a lot of energy expending. Um, that can be really tiring starting out new projects even if it's the best project in the world even if it's this thing that you've been wanting to do it's it, it can take a lot of energy so like you're being asked to be mindful and again with both of these being fours I, I think I already said this but fours being very much about solidity and about building and about stability you know I really feel like your spirit team is advising you that yeah there's some change some of it's maybe not going to feel that awesome in the moment, but it is going to lead to better things, things that are meant for you, um, things that will bring you opportunities to leap into your own unknown and to take a leap of faith and step forward into this next chapter and really let yourself expand and be nurtured by that energy of the sun, much like the plants are. Um, really let that energy of the sun show through and during all of this you know you're being invited by your spirit team to 
really be mindful of it and try and not be overly reactive to it. Try and tr keep an, an objective mindfulness to what's going on around you. Um, and, you know, even amidst all of the chaos, even amidst all of the excitement, all of the optimism, all of the creativity that is going to be coming your way, because with the Ace of Wands, that is often the harbinger of a big creative um, period of time. So you've got truths coming in, you've got creativity coming in, um, you've got a lot happening here, and it all looks like it's leading towards really great stuff. And again, your spirit team just wants you to remember, take care of your body, try and withhold some of the judgment that you may usually have for yourself and instead just be a more objective witness to your own experience which in a weird way it's like stepping out of your experiences and letting you have a more objective view of what's going on actually allows you to embody those experiences in in a new and different way which can also be the breaking of a cycle and the invitation of a new cycle into your life so that is all pretty rad. I can't believe I talked quite that long. Um, okay, so for additional uh, oracle cards, just last cards from the universe, so to speak, the first one we had is Manifest. And, you know, one of the things that I really love about this deck is I love that the way different intuitive messages come through um, even when I'm looking at the same card. So this time I'm really noticing that, God, that really just does look like a butterfly just about to fly over the rainbow. So, you know, again, that's very much for me, that feeling of the fool, that stepping into something new and unknown and really being willing to trust yourself and trust in your own leap of faith. And, you know, one of the best ways that we can learn how to trust ourselves is to witness ourselves objectively. And I don't want to speak for anybody else and I couldn't even if I wanted to, but in my own life, I have definitely noticed that my own self-judgment particularly at times of life where I'm struggling more or where I've been in a less mentally healthy place than I am fortunate enough to be in right now. Um, but when I've been in those places, the self-judgment that I have against me can actually be far worse than any judgment that anybody else could possibly have against me. And it gets in the way of me actually moving forward. So sometimes being able to step out of that judgment and being able to view things a bit more objectively and being like, I don't care if the voices in my head are saying that I'm not doing this right or that there's something wrong with me. Those are just judgments and I don't really need to hear exactly what they're saying right now. Let's instead just take a look at the objective facts. And, you know, I'm not saying it's easy work, but I have found that that is often a bit more rewarding and helps me move forward and sort of see the reason behind the challenges that I'm experiencing or seeing the silver linings um, in the clouds of <laughs> the storms that I'm trying to work my way through. Um, okay, so we have actually, oh, two came out here. So one is maintain your childlike spirit, which I love that, that is wonderful. And again, reminds me very much of that energy of the sun. And then the other one is amplify your positive emotions. And I think again, um, I kind of love that this is a little child playing in the water. I remember being a kid and just loving stepping in puddles and thinking that was so fun. And it's not something I do as much as an adult, but I have done it a few times. And um, there's something to be said for um, hearkening back to things that we found silly or enchanting as a child to try and amplify our positive feelings in the present moment. Because it's like a throwing a lifeline back to that child us that was perhaps a little bit it was a little bit easier to get in touch with those simple those simple things then. So, all right, before I wrap this all up, I'm gonna pull a crystal from my little pouch here. And, oh, okay, and this is Tiger Eye, which is in my collection, the stone that re is, represents the um, third chakra. The third chakra. I just had to make sure I remember which stones I had. Um, and so the third chakra is all about our energy distribution, sort of our sense of will, our gut feelings, our uh, gut intelligence. So, you know, I think that this is a beautiful stone to have pulled 
particularly with this message because it is, you know, being one of the lower three chakras, it is very much a body chakra. And so you're also being invited to, again, just stay with yourself during this process and to um, just listen to your body and, you know, show up for yourself. Make sure if you can, um, if you, if this reading resonates for you and you are finding that uh, things are feeling a bit heavy or there was some information that came at you this weekend uh, or over the next few days that happens to, uh, you know, feel like it's, it's pushing you off kilter. Just remember to reconnect with your core self, uh, really do some energy uh, work or some meditation or some contemplation and just be with yourself and know that you can trust yourself to get through this, that you do have power that you do have that sense of energy. Um, and also I think it's just kind of interesting here, kind of hearkening back to this one. I don't know that I've ever noticed this about this card, but with this four of pentacles, you know, he's he is holding here um, one of the pentacles uh, right at his sort of fourth chakra. So kind of holding it, or third chakra, right? Kind of holding it to him. And, um, and it's also yellow. Uh, so, I, you know, it, it really does just kind of sort of have that similar, like being aware of what your body is feeling and um, and really showing up for yourself in terms of your energy management during this time. Because it sounds like it might be some stuff going on. Uh, it sounds like maybe there's quite a bit more going on than I had originally thought when I was going to pull this. Uh, pull this reading for everybody. I kind of went into this thinking, of course, I'm open to whatever your energy wants to speak through me. Um, but uh, for some silly reason, I thought it was going to be a kind of lighthearted reading, despite the fact that I have literally almost never done a lighthearted reading, which isn't to say that the readings that I do are heavy hearted, just that they tend to be impactful and talk about the journey to self and the journey of self. Um, and other people certainly show up in my readings sometimes, but I do tend to find the messages that come through me tend to focus on, on the self and one's relationship with self and how the self relates to the world around us and better ways to manage all of that. Um, so I oughtn't be surprised. <laughs> um, I do hope that you found this helpful. I hope, uh, you are able to navigate these next three days using the advice of your spirit team to try and have some objectivity, um, not be so hard on yourself, not be too judgy on yourself, don't get too in your head, recognize this as an opportunity to move forward into something new, take a leap of faith and have a lot of appreciation for what you can accomplish. <sighs> I hope you found this helpful. I would love to hear your stories. I would love to hear if this resonated with you. Um, if you want to share anything about how it resonated with you, I would also love to hear that. Um, and you know, this is a pretty new channel. If you've got a suggestion for a reading that you'd like me to do, whether it's a reading for the collective or a reading like a pick a card type reading, I would love to hear from you. So please, dang it, I'm saying it at the end, I'm meant to say it at the beginning. Like, comment, subscribe, be kind to yourself, be gentle with yourself, and until next time, take care.